People, if they have a strong enough, you know, urge to do something and feel that they lock onto it and it's the right thing for them to just go for it, you know. I, it was just so different and I just felt so strong that it could be something, you know, really, really unique. And I just felt like it was destiny. And you got the sweet spot of the wave, then you go for it. You just drop in and go for it. tattoo thing, I, I got really interested in it when I was a little kid. My best friend's dad had some tattoos from World War II. In those days, people with tattoos either had been in the Navy or jail, that was it. Started drawing tattoos on neighborhood kids. My buddy Lenny, whose dad had the work on him, and I set up a little toy tattoo shop in, in our house. I found these colored pencils you could dip in water and they turned into like a marker, like watercolor. And I used a Maybelline eyeliner because it was greasy and black enough when we do the outline, and then I'd color them in. It seized me, you know, and I just thought it was something. It's all that I ever knew how to do. It's the only thing I was ever good at, still. But I didn't get into it with any kind of strategy. I just, I believed in it. I thought it had this incredible magnetism. And of course, I dug the fact that it was so, you know, people really, man, it gets a reaction. Tattoos will get a reaction every time. It doesn't matter how popular. I mean, now people are going, oh yeah, you're sleeved out and stuff. But still, because it's that thing about, it's on you forever. And, and you say, ah, but then you're going to die. It's not like, you know, your work's not going to be in the Louvre, you know. I just decided that I was going to open a tattoo shop. I thought, I'm not going to take my, my Yale fellowship. I'm gonna open a tattoo shop. And my wife, Francesca, encouraged me. She said, just go ahead and go for it. You gotta see if this will work. And if it doesn't work, you can put the flash up and go down by the bus depot. Before that, if you walked into a tattoo shop, there are very few tattooers that would do unique things. It's like, that's it, man, that's the menu. Like everything you're gonna eat, it's on the Denny's wall. And from even when I was a kid, I thought, this is kind of weird and stupid. You know, you're gonna have it forever and you should be able to get whatever you want. These things were just very hypnotic to me. It was always fun, you know, drawing with you too. You'd always take time to draw with me too. It was really fun seeing all these, all the uh, great old designs coming up on the, on the clothing. It was, it was fun to see it happen. It's like, oh, there's that tiger you drew when I was eight. I just feel so honored that these things, you know, that people responded to the, to the work. It's really, really great. I got into it doing it professionally because I was inspired by the Japanese stuff, which nobody was really doing in the West. Sailor Jerry was a little bit in Zeke, but uh, now there's been a revival of interest. It's like real art history where people are picking up on all these, all these different things. I mean, that's some flash of Jerry's and these things hung up here were actually carnival tattoo flash that were all wired together so they could set up on the midway and just let these things go and they would unfold in streams of designs. Tattoo in the mid 60s, there were probably 500 tattooers in all of North America. Right? And there's 5,000 in LA County now. So that's what happened. I think that that's one of the things that's really cool about what Ed does in general is, you know, he's taking that, the history of tattooing and honoring these tattooers that he's, you know, kind of on the shoulders of giants type of thing. And he's doing his own thing with it. And I think that that's the great thing about the tradition of Flash in general is that you're building on what people were doing before you and you make it your own, but it still belongs in that historical lexicon of images. If Ed had been in there or something had happened, tattooing as we know it would not be what it is because I mean, between 
education and publication and, and just doing work that was outstanding himself, he really transformed tattooing. I think that that's really powerful. It's incredible. I never thought it would go to the stage where I would say that like, Sailor Jerry would be like laughing in his grave, you know, this, of the way all this developed. None of us dreamed it would happen. I mean, look at my life's just been this incredible journey of, you know, it hasn't all been great and I've, I've screwed up plenty, you know, as I go along. You try to just not screw up in the same way as you advance, but uh, I've had an extremely fortunate life and it's mainly due to all my teachers, all the people alive and dead. And all, all art of the world is totally alive to me. That's the beauty of having something that won't die off. The tattoos are cool, but when you have a piece of art, when you see this, the spirit of those people live on in those things that they made, and that's, that's really important to me. It's as real as anything that I can see in this room. Something, I mean, it could be a Chinese painting 2,000 years ago. When I see that, I'm riveted, and I know in some way I'm getting a, a jolt of energy off whoever that anonymous painter was, you know. Okay, that's how you do it.